Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be answering some of the most top Google design questions. Number one, do I need to put artwork on every wall in my space? Short answer, no. <laughs> we both agree on this. I think a good rule of thumb and something that we always tell our clients is like stick to walls with large pieces of furniture in front of them. So if you are sort of unsure about your particular space, couch, bed, kitchen table. That is if you don't have any windows uh, around these spaces. So for example, when I say couch, artwork above the couch, bed, artwork above the bed, table, if you have no window or anything, it's like a kitchen like breakfast nook, artwork above that too. You don't wanna have blank walls, but then you also don't wanna have like this crazy busy spot with like all of this stuff everywhere. So I think if you really stick to quality over quantity, make sure that they're the right size. So a good rule of thumb, for example, if you have a couch, make sure one third of that length is being filled up above with artwork. Same with the bed, one third. But yeah, like I think just choosing the right size for the space itself. So like you're saying above the bed, above the couch, you wanna have something that's large enough to spit the majority of that space. And it doesn't have to be one picture or one piece of artwork. It could be numerous pieces. It just has to kind of fill that more space. You run into the challenge too, if you have like a living room plus your kitchen or dining room and it's one big wall, you can break that up and still do artwork on both sides. I would just suggest putting either like a lamp or like a tree in between. So you're kind of breaking up those two spaces in between. Yeah, when it's really open like that, it's sort of on you to like make the spaces yeah. themselves, but it's not, you know, the hardest thing ever with the right design tools and the right things. And I think another important thing is when people think artwork, they think of like a painting, but that could be shelves, it could be like uh, a canvas, it could be multitude of different types of artwork. So number two is how do I choose the correct rug size? So rug sizes is like, I think all of our clients ask us about this, right? And it, it can definitely be tricky, especially when you get run into like floor vents and uh, smaller, tighter spaces. Either the whole piece of furniture is on the rug or at least half. So that goes for beds and couches. Either if you're unsure and you have the space, put the entire couch on the rug and then let the rest do its thing. Um, if you don't have, if your rug is not big enough for that or if like the space doesn't allow for that, at least half. So if that's a couch, it's the front two legs on and then the, the last two legs can be off. So also to take your length or the longest size of your furniture and then make sure that the rug is like at least a foot longer than that. So the rug should always be bigger than the furniture that's sitting on it is like the best way to describe it. Yeah, and I think you wanna more so go towards the larger rug compared to the smaller rug. And another good tip that we tell people too is um, sometimes when you're sh online shopping for rugs, it'll like auto prompt you to put that uh, slip, the anti-slip mat underneath your rug. Like it'll be like, add this to your cart. And then people who don't know, they're like, oh shoot, maybe I need to put that in. We just always tell people, don't worry about it. If you have like a heavy bed on the rug, it's not gonna move. If it's gonna be something solo, that is in like an entryway, then maybe um, it might be a little bit, you know, smarter to do that. But I think usually the answer is you don't need that. So number three, where are you supposed to place your curtains? Very exciting question. I have a, <laughs> I have an OCD issue with curtains. I like to just put my rod like almost touching the ceiling in almost everything as high as possible. Yeah, I think you're probably the same. We, we generally speaking tell our clients that too. And um, there are some instances where like, it does make sense to just frame out the window. But I think raising the bar, no pun intended, as high as you can possibly go, just makes the room look luxe, elevated, uh, bigger, brighter, nicer. As you go up in height, you wanna make sure your curtains are long enough where they're just lightly dusting the floor or just kind of loosely bunching. So you need to have enough material if you're gonna be going higher with the rod. Yeah, and the pulled effect has to be pulled off properly too. I think that when you're using sheer, more lighter whimsical fabrics, the pooling uh, look can, yeah. can look nice. If it's more of like a dark curtain that's more like blackout for more functional purposes, probably best to just have it dust the ground. The other thing too with awkwardly placed windows is you can easily trick the eye with curtains and with window treatments. 
by centering and framing out the wall rather than the window. The window is gonna be covered anyway. It will look, I guess, strange maybe to some people because the window might be on the side and your curtains are gonna be centered to the, the wall, but I promise you it's gonna look, like we always say, it's gonna look so much better, so much more purposeful and not like there's a weird window <laughs> off to the side, which I hate that builders do that, but it happens sometimes. And also like another good rule of thumb is not every window needs a curtain. So there's a multiple different window treatments that you can sub in when appropriate. So for example, in a bathroom, we like to use just like that privacy frost. You have a window in your shower. Yeah. A curtain. Yeah, so the one where it just like blurs it out for you because curtains in a bathroom do not make sense. And then you can also do just strict blinds or um, Roman Cal shades. Yep, California shutters. So there's all different things that you could do instead of a curtain as well. Great point. So number four is, should I have nightstands in my bedroom? How many? And should we add lamps? Yes. <laughs> um, nightstands in a bedroom, like they don't even have to be crazy or big or clunky or anything. They could even be something as simple as like a tiny little like shelf on a wall if you have no space, but you should have something beside your bed. It's just like everyone has a phone that they need to plug in. Or if you don't have a phone, you drink water or you have a piece of jewelry that you need to take off. You just like, it's nice to have something there. And again, it kind of looks, the room looks unfinished without nightstands. Lamps as well too, or even a wall sconce if you don't have a surface area for a lamp is just gonna bring in that amazing mood, that ambiance that you really look for in a um, in a relaxing bedroom. Like your bedroom is really your sanctuary, right? That's where you're putting your head down at night, getting your rest, and to be able to shut off that brutal, harsh over light, uh, overhanging light, and you know, have a lamp or a wall sconce is just like gonna completely change the atmosphere. And then I think when you can, definitely have one on each side, like it's functionality and also creating the fullness within the room. Yes, you do need nightstands on either side of your bed and you do need lamps on those nightstands. Um, maybe we should address though, people that have to have their bed up against a wall, it is a little bit of a trickier situation. So like in that instance, you can get away with having one nightstand. If there's any way you can pull it away from the wall, like literally any way, um, we always would recommend doing that but I realize that in some spaces, it's just, you can't do it. So at least have the one nightstand and uh, the lamp. So number five is how do I decorate my kitchen countertops? This is a very interesting question because I think this comes down to personal taste. When it's an Airbnb, I think we always err on the side of less is more, keep things simple. You also don't want like decor items to break, which it will happen with a lot of turnover. Personal homes are obviously a different story. It's like what you like, but I think you and I both resonate with um, maybe something like one and done, like something purposeful. So if it's an island, a, a beautiful vase with like flowers could be a nice option. I'm a personal fan of if, if your kitchen is littered with outlets, it, it's a good thing because you need outlets in the kitchen, but you can definitely use like really nice boards or you know cutting boards or things like that to lean up against the wall to hide some of the outlets because it just looks like really busy. The less clutter, the better. Um, I'm a huge fan of if you have the space available, like put those extra items that you're not using on the daily away in storage. So like sure. a toaster, <laughs> we for both, example. We both hate toasters on the gap. Yeah, yeah. Less is more. I would. Yeah, say. less. Is, I I agree for sure. Yeah, you want to make the countertop and the backsplash and like maybe the sink really the decor and the you know eye-catching part of the space because kitchen at the end of the day is like I think mostly functionality even though everyone seems to gather there um, but I still think yeah more functionality over anything but you can easily get a beautiful like oversized vase and then switch out whatever's in that vase as the seasons go around and that's a really simple easy and inexpensive way to add some decor to your kitchen. Similar to, I would say, a bathroom, you want it to look for your guests clean, but functional. So if you wanna add those extra things, you know, from like Walmart, Ikea, Target, the soap dispensers, you can have a nice like scrub brush. I think those would really elevate your space and take it to the next level. So number six is, is it okay to use the same light fixtures that were already in my property when I took possession? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, it, it, sometimes it makes sense to leave them, but it, like we always tell people, it, 
you can get light fixtures for as little as like $40, like $50, really inexpensive like hanging light fixtures. And that is something that's so forgotten. And you look at a space, look in a room and the light fixture is a little bit different. You notice, maybe you, you're, it's your subconscious that notices, not you directly, but it does make such a difference to the room. It brings in a new elevation and builder lighting is just so easy to spot. Um, be different. You know, for four, if you've got three lights to switch out, you can do it for 150 bucks and it's really, really worth it. It just like makes that space look so much more custom. And I would say it's like one of the number one things that people do think and leave is forgotten. Like you were saying, it's gonna elevate your space, but also bring back some modern touches. So number seven is how do I pick and arrange throw pillows for my bed? Ooh, excellent question. Um, this is actually funny because I think for personal homes, usually there's like, like with couples, I think one person likes pillows, one person doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I know it, pillows are just for luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know in my home, my husband's like, why is there 400 pillows on our bed? Like we don't use them, but they obviously are there for the look of, the, of everything. In an Airbnb though, you want the pillows to provide decor, comfort, a feeling when people walk in. So you can really go as much or as little as you want. I think rule of thumb, all beds should have something on them, like at least, and, and probably a grouping of three, I would say, right? Like throw pillows, yeah. Yeah, like on you, top of your four pillows that fit the bed. Yeah, so your four sleeping pillows, and then you should at least have three additional pillows. And then if you want more than that, then move up to five move up to seven and they can be different sizes, different shapes, different um, patterns. Thanks so much for watching guys. Subscribe to our channel for more design and real estate investing content. Thank you so much to Tile Giant Burlington for the studio space.